at the center of it. It's like any other technology. Uh, it has to be about humanity and, and helping humanity. And, and so you can bet that the way that we look at it is like that. Uh, but it's, it's an area of great opportunity, I believe. But do you think that there'll be a day where we'll all wear you know, VR goggles and, and live in a digital universe? Uh, all is a big uh, word. <laughs> it's a very big word. And uh, I think there has to be advancements in technology that are beyond what is possible today. Uh, but I get back to AR today is alive and well. You know, we have the largest AR platform on, on iPhone. And you can do things today that uh, a few years ago you couldn't imagine doing. Like uh, if you're shopping for furniture, you can look at the new sofa in your room. Uh, if you're designing a home or designing a home for someone else, uh, it's a great use of, of AR. And uh, so there, there are things that are possible today. And I think that that, that just get, becomes more and more exciting as, as time goes on. I know you, you hate to an ask, answer questions about cars, but I'm so <laughs> curious. Um, about your cars uh, or about the expectation of cars. Is there anything you can tell us? No. No, you know, we, we try not to talk about the future too much because we've got so much going on in the current day that we try to be secretive about the future. And so I don't, I don't have anything to share today. It wouldn't be us if we didn't keep something up our sleeves. Okay, let me try out this then. Um, I think it was about a couple years ago now, as you know, Elon Musk, because he's been public about it, said that he tried to get a meeting with you to sell Tesla to you, in fact, because uh, the company was actually struggling. Now, of course, the company has a trillion dollar market value. You apparently didn't take the meeting. In retrospect, you wish you did. You know, I've never uh, spoken to Elon. Uh, and. Uh, and there are lots of companies out there that, that we could have bought at different times, probably. And I, but I feel really good about where we are today. And, did you uh, know he was trying to get to you? I, I don't remember it being like that, but, I, but, I, but he said that he did, and so I, I assume that that's correct. Um, let me ask you about your role as a CEO, because um, you've been very outspoken on, on a lot of issues, uh, immigration, voting rights, the abortion laws in, in Texas, LGBT issues. And I think a lot of leaders and the public are, are trying to understand the role that corporations should play today, when corporations feel that they can speak out and take, take, take a side, if you will, mm -hmm. and when they can't, and how you think about that. I think about uh, not wading into politics, but sort of sticking to a lane on policy. And you know, Apple is probably one of the very few uh, medium or large companies that doesn't even have a PAC. And so we, we try to steer clear of the politics on something and, and focus on policy. And if, if it's a policy that uh, intersects with our values or intersects with our company in some way, the likelihood that we're going to speak up is, is great. Uh, if it doesn't intersect, if it's something that we would just be another voice out there and, and not have a, a unique perspective to bring, uh, then we don't say anything. Uh, take immigration as an example. We have 450 dreamers in Apple. And so we're, we are very focused on uh, getting them a pathway to citizenship. And, uh, and so we're going to speak up on that and speak up for them. Uh, and there, there are other things like that, but, but we're sticking to the policy elements of that, not the politics of it. But, but what happens when, of course, the policy intersects with, the, poli intersects with the, the politics of it all, right? Well, I think sometimes that you can't prevent that in today's environment, but at, at least our hearts and minds are around the policy. When something is important to you, you have a responsibility to, to say something. Well, that, that's what I was going to ask you, because invariably you've been criticized for not speaking out on human rights issues, for example, in China and other, and other countries as well. Uh, this is something I think a lot of companies that, that have been doing business in China struggle with. A number of companies, as you know, have abandoned China. How do you think about that? I think that we have a responsibility as a business to do business in as many places as we can, uh, because I think business is this huge catalyst. I, I believe in what Tom Watson said, is world peace through world trade. I, I, I have always believed that. And so I think we should be about uh, not, you know, not pulling up the drawbridge, but we should be about building the bridges. And uh, so, so I think that's key for business. You know I love a clean fit. Look good, feel good, am I right? So I partnered up with Indochino to show you the entire experience. They have over 80 showrooms in the US. They make suits for both men and women, and there are just so many different patterns and colors you can pick from that changes throughout the year. So you'll get measured on site from your shoulders to your chest and to your wrist, but then it's really time to customize your suit this is everything from the lapel style to the inner lining. You can customize it down to the buttons. If you're looking for a matching tie or pocket squares galore, they got that too. I then just place my order and after a few weeks, it gets delivered to my house and I'm right back for my final look. So let's just try this thing on and voila. This is where we'll see if there are any adjustments to be made. I love how this looks. This is So I just got a chance to check out the latest sound tech from Snapdragon's S3 Gen 2 sound platform. And check this out right here. This USB-C dongle will give you the lowest wireless audio latency at under 20 milliseconds. There's nothing out there like it right now. And you probably are using wired headphones over your ears to game because wireless options just aren't good enough. Not anymore. You can hear guns when they fire, where they fire from, or footsteps from someone who is tracking you. I know you've been there. Well, this dongle is gonna do it all by just plugging it in and then communicating to your headphones 
or earbuds wirelessly, or it can be built into computers in the future. Now you'll start seeing brands launching at the end of the year for you to get your hands on this stuff. So keep your eyes out for the latest from Snapdragon Sound. I love how this All right, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Here, let's start off honestly with control centers of everything you got. So, spatialized audio. This is cool. When you got, if you had like AirPods Pro and they do that utility where it figures out what your personalized spatial audio is like based on um, it looks like your ear shape and whatnot, this saves that and brings it over and is stored into your iCloud profile. Now, focus modes, we know these do not disturb, which is on right now because I don't want people interrupting this video. But look, we got driving, fitness, personal sleep, mindfulness. I've not seen that as before, and so let's just uh, try and set it up and see what happens. Allowed people, none allowed to get to you. Allowed apps, none apps. Basically, it's almost like do not disturb, I feel like, right? And it oh, I think the thing is that it automatically turns on when you use the app. So you, that, that's interesting. Okay, that's cool. That's a cool, that's a cool way to, to deal with it. Okay, so we basically set it up. So whenever I jump into mindfulness, we'll just shut everything down temporarily. Screen time, we know how this works. No one wants screen time restrictions. Cell anemia is a major disease, uh, particularly in the African American population here, and it's caused by a single point mutation uh, in your red blood cells. And it actually is the case where if you can knock out that one bad gene, your other and it's a dominant gene, your recessive gene, which is normal. I love it. Um, Reed, we're gonna have to go here in a second, but I also just wanted to talk to you as a Bay Area native. Yes. The San Francisco Bay Area has obviously gotten a lot of grief. Uh, I'm just wondering, do you want to sort of tell us why you think people have it wrong? Well, I am likely the most biased person you're ever going to talk to because <laughs> I was born in Palo Alto. I went to Stanford, and I very proudly have lived in San Francisco for the last nine years. Uh, it is. I think Bay Area is the most beautiful place in the world, and it will always be home. You know. The Bay Area, if you look historically, has been a lot like a phoenix. It has had booms and busts that have been extremely uh, like volatile all throughout its history. And every time you know, there's a bit of a downturn, there's always a lot of naysayers and, oh, you know, this is the end, what were we thinking? And consistently, that has been proved wrong. And already, I promise you, already, there are companies, young companies that are very excited to be here, talent that doesn't want to look anywhere else. And capital, and you mentioned AI earlier, AI is not happening in other parts of the country. Right. It's happening here in San Francisco. Yeah. No, it's exciting. And you can just see the energy. I mean, obviously, at this show, uh, but elsewhere, I mean, the restaurants are buzzing, people are out on the streets, and it's just, it just feels like the city has really come back. I mean, obviously, we have problems to overcome, but. That's exactly right. Well, uh, uh, I see where time I actually just want to end by thanking oh, you yeah. for putting on such a wonderful uh, inaugural event. Oh, thanks. Thanks. It's amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you all. Hey, everybody. I always some selfies on stage. Okay, that's fine. Am I, am I in it? Okay, now I'm in it. <laughs> Don't everyone do that. <laughs> uh, great talk to Shaq. Uh, that's like, I think the only guest that I played as in NBA Jam, probably, that we've had. Uh, so that's something. All right, but next up, stick around. Great chat coming up. Great discussion we have with uh, our very own brand new editor-in-chief, Connie Lazos. And she's going to be talking to a guest who has a very famous father, but also he is making news in his own right with a new $200 million venture fund, specifically looking to invest in tech to help fight cancer. So he apparently never thought that he would be a VC, uh, wanted to be a doctor, and ended up doing this instead. And we'll hear why he took this path. Uh, so let's welcome up Connie and Reed Jobs. So, Reed, thank you so much for joining us today. My absolute pleasure, Connie. Uh, and I want to echo that congratulations to you uh, as you assume this great new role as editor-in-chief. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet of you to say. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, Reed, you have...
get it for them. Because I feel so bad for them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, my first, my daughter. Hello, how you doing? The what? Uh, my, uh, my, my girlfriend wants some chicken. She want a wing and a... Uh, I think she want a drumstick. Uh, how much are the wings? Is it... The thing is right there. All uh, right, let me check real quick. Uh, she want a, uh, a leg, what's 179? Um, I think she want two legs. Yeah, like, you know, uh, two legs, I'm gonna pay up here. It's coming out of Apple, it, it's, a, it's, a Apple and, it's an Apple computer. Uh, I think it's called an expense, expense account. It's like Steve Jobs' son going to jail because the police arrested him because he had Im incriminating images on his Apple Vision Pro handset, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, two wings. We don't have any wings right now. Okay, I'm going to go with uh, the drumstick. Uh, that's the... Uh, that's the... $1.79. Each? Okay, well, show my girl real quick how they look. Hey, look, look, that's how they look. Okay, yeah, let me get two of them. Yes, ma'am.
גם אם... these computers, you never know. Somebody could be trespassing in a government computer. I'm going to pay cash because I don't trust. I thought you said card. Okay. Uh, no, because when you pay with cards, somebody like this uh, Sarah Bond, an Xbox president, could trespass in a government computer, so she got to go to prison for the Patriot Act for life. Like a terrorist. She a terrorist. That's why she got that scarf on her head. See, this is a modern terrorist. I got her recording live. She's in interrogation at Nellis Air Force Base. See how she, she, she cracked out. She a crackhead. So, buy you going to jail. Say, hey, there go your change. There you go, there you go. Say, oh, what's you up? you buying that for her? Oh, uh, no, she's going to jail for uh, tr uh, trespassing the government computer. Patriot Act, George Bush. She, oh, okay. Yeah, she a terrorist. Oh. So she had used a computer to do it with the Apple Vision Pro headset. Oh, okay. At the Apple store. It's called $3,500. She trafficked in uh, military goods because that product is uh, defective. Because, you know, she's a heavy drug user, and I'm sending her to prison for life. She thought she was slick. Go come on my computer. That's how you're going to jail. How about that? It's Sunday. Now you're going to jail. How about that? Let's start over. Now, how about that? Go to jail.
that we have now and the people that follow us and the, the consumers that buy our things are the people that became emotionally invested in the family. And there was always a family member that somebody either, you know, loved or, or you know, wanted to watch their journey. And everybody saw the kids grow up on TV for the last decade or so. Well, and that's what's so interesting to me because it's, it's generational, right? I mean, you... Totally, and yes. You, you've actually now sort of almost segmented out, if you will, so many different demographic markets in terms of both age and all sorts of, and just how people approach the family. So that's what I was thinking. When you guys create products now, do you guys sit around and say, my brand, my, the Kim brand represents this, the Kylie repre brand represents this, the Chloe brand represents, they're, that they're all spaced out. And, how does this work? Thing would become the spokeswoman for all of these people are coming how do you sort of sort it out what do you accept that you want to do what don't you want to do how, how, take us inside yeah. the 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 kardashian uh, uh uh jenner empire well for a paid post i am really um cautious about like what i spend so if i overspend on something and a paid post happens to come in at that time i'll weigh it out and think okay well i have to pay for X, Y, and Z, so this paid post. Oh, you mean your own personal expenses. <laughs> yes, my own personal expenses. Or if I'm even like, okay, you know, we have schooling projects, and now it's a little bit more personal for me. If I have a paid post that comes in and I think, okay, well, this can fund X amount of people that are behind bars that can help free them with simple legal fees that they just can't afford, then that would be worth it to me, even if the post might be a little bit off brand for me. I really weigh out different things now than I used to. Okay, so what's on brand for you? Um, any well, beauty as long as it doesn't compete, fitness, um, health stuff, maybe um, just any health products. If I, you know, when I mentioned I was having a CBD baby shower because I needed some calm before the storm of a fourth kid coming. Every CBD company on the planet reached out. <laughs> and um, you just, it, it's, you know, it's, I, it's kind of this joke also that I do if I really want something and I'm a bit lazy, I can tweet, I'm loving Oreo, I'm craving Oreos right now. And then on my doorstep, every flavor <laughs> Oreo will show up. It's true, with her name on each cookie. <laughs> so are there, are there companies though that come to you and you say, look, I just, this is not, this is not me and I'm not gonna do it. Or I just can't do it for whatever reason. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think we've really learned uh, by trial and error, too, and experience. I mean, there was a time when I was about to say earlier that Kim and I, in the beginning, would sit and have these goals we would write down for the year and what we really wanted to do. And the first thing that we talked about and Kim's passion was from the very beginning was fragrance. And that was so just her thing was fragrance. Growing up, she loved fragrance. So that was one of our first goals that we wrote down and something that we were able to accomplish and that felt so good. I'll never forget her and I sitting at the Beverly Hills Hotel at this meeting and the guy handed us a, a check. Do and you we remember probably that? went in the bathroom stall. We were screaming, the door, screaming up and like, woohoo! Yeah. 
And it was so exciting and satisfying and rewarding, but there's been a lot of, you know, we've kissed a lot of frogs along the way and thrown a lot of spaghetti at the wall. You so know, there what hasn't times. worked for you? Well, I mean, listen, one, one great example that I, I wanted to tell you the other day was the, the Got Milk campaign. I thought Kim would be so great in like a Got Milk campaign. Remember, like everybody did these Got Milk campaigns. And I thought, oh, well, she's like perfect for that. I don't know where that came from. And I'm sure I was a lot more excited and enthusiastic about this idea than the Got Milk people were. So that really never came to fruition. And then at the end of the day, a couple years ago, Kim was in a music video and she was taking a milk bath. And I thought, you did it, Kim, you got milk all over that body. <laughs> so that was kind of like a fun thing. But there's been things that talk about off brand in the very beginning, the girls did. Um, oh, we did everything. We quick did trim. everything. From Remember quick trim? And, and at the end of the day, you really cupcakes. just wanted to be curvy. We exactly. did everything you could possibly imagine. If someone came to, to us with a product, we were just so excited that they were interested, that we would do things that were really off-brand. And I think that even that stage in our life, I look back and think that was such a learning, growing process for us. And I feel like in the last few years, I finally found my voice on what to say no to, what to really stand mm -hmm. up for, how to really focus in. There could be amazing deals that come our way financially, um, on brand. Everything, you know, fits my criteria. But if there's just no time, like now I feel like there's a power in saying no and having a little bit of time, you know, for my family and self and everything else. That well, you have really to have the bandwidth that. to be able to put that kind of energy and time and creativity into a brand or an idea that somebody wants you to be a part of. And if what they're, you know, if she's signing up for something that she's never going to have time to do, it's only going to be a disservice to everyone. So how does this work, though? So does somebody call you and say, I pay you X amount of money for, for a, a, a post? Is there, what's the market, well, what's the market right now for, for an Instagram post? Hmm. Well, I, I, think, I, <laughs> I think that um, what we do have is, I started to say earlier, is this great incoming of offers and deals that come through, whether it's um, a private equity, a brand, um, a VC, a bank. You know, there's just so much coming in that we and she, my kids all have to be their own CEO. I might act as the CEO of a bigger picture and just weigh each thing that comes in. I'm if it's say a cute story since my husband's here. So um, there was a fast fashion brand, a few of them, and they would knock off Yeezy all the time. His color
fare to board. The RTC does not allow courtesy rides for any passengers. Atención pasajero, debes pagar la tarifa de abordar. Claro que se no ofrece viajes de cortesía a los pasajeros.
not involved in this. Then I tell you want to go to jump it. I'm not a fucking walker. If Mike wants to come by to take it, that's what I'm going to do. Get back. Bye.